did we uh, hear everybody here? Do we have any comments that we feel like uh, sharing with others and opening a point of discussion? Maybe Margaret, we haven't heard you for a while now. Hi, I was looking for the uh, uh, information about this uh, hearing you referred to, and I, I found it actually. So if it looked like I was looking, I was. I was trying to find it. Uh, and uh, a tweet from Friends of the uh, Simon Wiesenthal Center. Today, uh, Michael Levitt, don't know who he is, participated in the first ever hearing of the Interparliamentary Task Force to combat online anti-Semitism in Washington, D.C. Here he questions Twitter over its handling of the recent uh, uh, Laif Maruf. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do too much here. Let me just put the, <laughs> the link in the chat so you can... Uh, Everybody can see it uh, for themselves. Um, uh, Ms. cutler wanch has a, has a question. No, the frustration is that comments. Zionist, of course, is not a religion. We all understand that, except that Zionist is an integral part of the majority of Jews and many non-Jews. And so when you separate it in that way, of course, you'll never be able to address it, right? So that Zionism is actually when it replaces Jew on every single digital platform, and so I'm not addressing any specific one of you, then we have a problem, and that's what we're here to Their discuss. Content. And, and Ms. Austin, having joined us from Ottawa, you will be familiar with the name Laith Maruf, yes? His tweets became the subject of national headlines over the last month, and I presume they've caused some reflection probably within the halls of Twitter, certainly within your offices locally in Ottawa. Correct. So I wonder, I've got a sample of, uh, I'll sh share one tweet here. I have a motto, life's too short for, shoelace, for shoes with laces or for entertaining Jewish white supremacists with anything but a bullet to a head, to the head. Um, but there's that a new account. A new account was opened. And do you want to know how the individual evaded the uh, complex safeguards in place at Twitter? I have a feeling you're going to tell me. I, I am. He used an underscore. His previous account had been at Laith Maruf. His new account is at Laith underscore Maruf. Does that sound like it meets the safeguards and, and the terms of the suspension? Because the original account is s still suspended, which suggests to me either it was not appealed or the appeal was rejected. But let's go for a moment and look at some of the tweets that exist in that account. So as an example, um, you know, and this is again, this is from July of, uh, sorry, August of this year. You know all those loudmouth bags of human feces, AKA the Jewish white supremacists? When we liberate Palestine and they have to go back to where they came from, they will turn to being low voiced bitches of their Christian slash secular white supremacist masters. Um, now, I will just add that I think you're, we're all starting to see, anyone watching this, why we're eventually going to have to regulate the, the, the way that this, these, this content is handled, uh, as opposed to just leaving it to you, uh, the companies, to, uh, to, comply, you know, to, to make sure you're complying with standards that really aren't very transparent. And I'll just leave oh, it at that. So um, at any rate, I, I just sounded so, it's not that I didn't believe you, but it sounded so outlandish. I said, I have got to see this for myself. And there it is, Debbie Wasserman Schultz um, and uh, members of Congress and uh, apparently um, uh, watch the full hearing here. So I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to put the link in the chat so I can um, uh, show you all where this is from. But I did want to not let anybody forget about Justin Trudeau's blackface uh, uh, episodes. And I don't know if people in Canada just don't mention that anymore, but I don't know who he is to talk about anyone else being racist or bigoted in any way. So I'm going to look for that link and I'll put it in the chat. Thanks. You know, let me just bring up two points. One is in, one, of the, one of the most memorable moments of my life was, and I was at Oka and I was arrested by the Canadian army and I was prosecuted for, for two years and I was banned. And they gave, I was there as, as an attorney. I represented the Warrior Society in Akwazasane for 20 years. Um, 
And we were preparing an exchange and I don't remember the name of who the prime minister, of, of who the premier, I forget the, the, the crown label was in Quebec at the time, but we were having a meeting and I helped to draft the response. And the opening line was, you know, we, we are honored to sit here on behalf of the people from our nation to your province. And he lost it. I know someone who was in the room completely and said, how can I talk to these people? And it's, how can I talk to these people? Well, it's their nation and it's your province. The other thing that I, that, that, that I find so interesting about this cross-border discussion today is that while the Zionist money, while the Zionist effort, while the Zionist attempt to intimidate academia, to intimidate um, um, scholarship, to intimidate university has been successful because of the private entity. In every single case in the United States, and I'm not praising the United States, but it goes back to my position on the First Amendment, which Canada doesn't have, and we don't have hate speech. In every single instance where there has been an effort to impose hate speech to in institutionalize and legislate the Zionist agenda to ban BDS, to ban assembly, to ban speech, every single bit of legislation has failed. Right now, there is one case that has survived the appeal in the Eighth Amendment, but the paradox of this is the Supreme Court, that racist ent ent entity of the Federalist Society is gonna reverse it to ensure that the Ku Klux Klan, to ensure that the, the Proud Boys, to ensure that the other racists in this country have an equal right to say what they want to say. So when they, when someone from Canada comes here, who has for 200 or 250 years done everything in their power to silence speech long before Zionists showed up from Poland, and from from Brooklyn. And from, and from Germany, when someone has the nerve, a committee of Zionists, where the JDL is a banned organization, but they come into the United States, where someone from, from, the, from, from Canada deigns to come to the United States and they hug and they break bread and they, 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 they talk about speech and activity. And, and as, as the brother said a short while ago, this is, this is a colony, this is a colonial empire that still has a queen. This is a colonial empire where Trudeau wears moccasins and says a few words and all of a sudden becomes a hero. This is an empire where Neil Young can be supportive of indigenous self-determination, but at the same time go to Tel Aviv. So this bridge, this connection, this break, that we spoke about earlier transcends voice, transcends association, and all comes down to one thing, struggle. In the 1990s, and I'm not advocating or inciting violence here, between the standoff at Ganyonge, between the standoff at Ganawage, between the standoff at Ganasadage, between the standoff of a year in Agazasne, between indigenous communities from coast to coast of, of, of Canada saying to Canada, if you invade at this point, Oka, or Ganasadage, this is what we are going to do, they froze. So the, the message here is that I'm not, I'm, not suggesting, I'm not suggesting incitement, but it is clear not only does the United Charter state, but the Geneva Conventions, the law of war, the law that came out of the civil war in the United States is very clear. The occupied and the oppressed have a right of self-determination, they have a right of armed struggle, they have a right to defend themselves, to defend their families, and to fight back. So to the extent whether, whether it's Zionists or whether it's so-called truckers in Canada that are demonstrating against COVID and coming across indigenous communities without invitation, without any offer, without any permission, destroying land, when they stand up and say, we speak for freedom, the answer is to push back. I'm not gonna suggest how we push back because each indigenous community takes unto itself its own means of self-determination and struggle. So this, this obscenity of Canadian Zionists coming to the Congress to speak about self-determination and freedom and liberation, meanwhile, they're carrying handcuffs. They're carrying the theft of natural resources. They are burying people from coast to coast and throughout the world is the penultimate 
penultimate example of hypocrisy, and it is doomed to fail. You know, uh, Margaret uh, Michael Livet is a member of parliament here in Canada. He is one of the um, Zionist main faces in the parliament that uh, keep, uh, you know, uh, defending the Zionist colony. Um, obviously, if you what you brought in here, Stanley, in terms of uh, self determination, is at the issue of, of the struggle against colonization and uh, the communities both here and in Palestine have been successful in maintaining that struggle. And this is what the Zionists and the colonists in general, imperialists are um, mad about, that, that we are still fighting back and have not uh, given up um, the Threats that we see here in Canada is that we have the government trying to rewrite the Broadcasting Act that governs media. Uh, and at the same time, they want to put in a new um, act that governs the internet and uh, uh, you know empowers them to be able to be in control of it. And a third act that has to do with uh, you know, incitement and hate online. And those, the three being converged as it seems like the Zionists are taking advantage of this uh, story with uh, mine is what the threat is. It's, it's beyond the threat for myself or uh, Palestine, our work on Palestine in Canada. It's an issue of freedom of speech and access to media in general, which the governments in the West uh, and Canada is an example of that, are rushing to uh, have full dictatorial control of in these days, as we see as the collapse of uh, Western hegemony. I think we have uh, taken a lot of your time, everybody. It's, uh, I, I, I hope that I'm not cutting off anybody. If we feel like we missed any points here, this is a good chance for you to say your your last uh, words. Well, if it, if it means anything, um, I've been banned five days or six days, and we plan on litigating. It's just a question of when, and we're going to pursue it. Uh, but I probably have received 500. Forget about the fact that Twitter's filled with my face on people's posts right now. Um, a brother of mine from Hamas, and you know, I represented Hamas for 20 years, uh, said, well, I'm the last member of Hamas that's been left on Twitter. They finally got rid of the Zionists. The, the, the Zionists finally got rid of the Jewish member. Uh, but I have received messages from Istanbul, from South Africa, from the Congo, from Argentina, from Ireland, from so many countries all over the world, from indigenous communities in North America and South America, which sends the message that they can silence us, but never quiet us. That we are a community of resistance. We are a community of self-determination. We are a community that expands beyond the narrow confines of anthems and flags and oaths, and we will never be defeated. All right. Thank you all for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, this was a great conversation and uh, We'll, we'll hopefully continue this in, in other ways and the struggle continues and liberation is an ongoing uh, work, a multi-generation, and we hope to really leave this world in a better place for our children and our grandchildren, but uh, this is the struggle of life. Thank you very much all for being here tonight. La lucha continua. La lucha continua. Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. A pleasure to be with this wonderful group. And uh, one it's way pleasure, or another, pleasure. we are always together. Very good. Lovely. We carry on together. <clears throat> we'll see each other again. Inshallah. Ona. Ona. Ona.